Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is a trail? If you've already watched my video on walks, then a lot of this should be familiar, including this beautiful graph that we're going to use again for the sake of this lesson. So just as before, let's say we are intrepid travelers making our way through this graph. Suppose we start at this vertex, V1. And then let's say we make our way over here to V2 and then we head on down to V5, and then we go over here to V6, then we cross this edge up to V4, then we go back to V2, and then make our way over here to V3, and then come to a stop. Then what we have just described is a trail in the graph G. But what makes it a trail? Well, we'll call the trail T, and just like with walks, we can define it as a sequence of vertices in G. So we started at V1, then we went to V2, then we went to V5, then to V6, then up to V4, then we revisited V2, and then we ended at V3. So what is it about this sequence of vertices that makes it a trail? Well, just as with a walk, consecutive vertices are adjacent in G. So anytime we're at one vertex, from that vertex, we can only go to adjacent vertices. So for example, when we were at V5, we could either go to V6 or to V2. We couldn't skip over to V3 because V5 and V3 aren't adjacent in G. So consecutive vertices have to be adjacent, but that's the same as with walks. So what differentiates trails from walks? Well, trails have one extra rule. That is, you can't traverse the same edge multiple times in a trail. You can traverse the same vertex multiple times, which we did. We visited the vertex V2 twice. But the first time we visited V2, we were going across this edge. And the second time, we were going across this edge. So it's still a trail because we didn't traverse any edge more than once. So in a trail, every edge you encounter has to be unique in that trail. That is, you can't have already encountered this edge before, otherwise it's not a trail. In a walk, you could go wherever you want as long as you're going from one vertex to some adjacent vertex. But of course, the trail throws in this one extra rule. And all of the same vocab we used with walks, you can also use with trails. So for example, we can say that our trail T is an open trail because the first and last vertices are distinct. Also, you can refer to the first and last vertices as endpoints. So because the endpoints of the trail are distinct, we can say that it is an open trail. Of course, if the endpoints were equal, then we could call it a closed trail. So for example, if there was an edge joining V3 and V1, and then after going to V3, which is where we previously stopped, we then went across this edge back to V1, that would be a closed trail, because the endpoints are equal. We started at V1, and we ended at V1. And the only reason I drew this edge joining V3 and V1 is because otherwise there wouldn't be a way to get back to V1 without traversing an edge for a second time, so it wouldn't be a trail anymore. Also, we can say that the length of our trail, T, is the number of edges encountered during the trail. And of course, we can count those easily. One, two, three, four, five, six edges were encountered in the trail T. So we can say that it has a length of six, which you might notice is one less than the number of vertices encountered in a trail, which is a rule that holds true for trails and walks. And also, just the same as with walks, we can refer to this trail T as a V1 V3 trail because it starts at V1 and ends at V3. And we can also say that every vertex and edge in the trail lies on that trail. So for example, the edge V5 V6 lies on the trail T. But that's really all there is to it. A trail is just a walk where no edge is encountered multiple times. So I hope this video helped you understand what trails are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can't wait.